Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Another windy day, but I think we will be okay with the recording. Many of you know where I am because I keep on coming back here. I just feel good energy of this place. Let me tell you, this monument is called, you see those three eagles right here? Three eagles. Actually, you can read it yourself. It's right here. Monument to the Polish endeavor. Each one of those eagles represents a generation. So three generations of Poles. I always like this statue. And today, guys, let me start with telling you that two days ago I had a live stream with the one and only Mr. Andrei Martianov, who always says it like it is. He doesn't sugarcoat. And it was really good live stream, in my opinion. Uh, I know many of you appreciate Andrei as much as I do. If you haven't seen this live stream already, make sure to check it out. And yes, what do I have for you today, everyone? I have two topics. The main topic will be about how the examination for the military trainings, military conscription in Poland looks like. I'm not sure how it is in other countries, but in Poland it's something else, everyone. <laughs> I'm going to read you this. This is like not surprise at all. So the main topic will be this. This will be a pretty lengthy article that I'm going to read you. But we start with the Migration Pact from the European Union Commission and Ursula de Witch. I just want to show you how beautiful the trees are. Ur Ursula de Witch, van der Leyen and her Under the Sea project, as you know, Ursula de Witch and the Little Mermaid movie and under the sea. But before we go into this, what they just signed into existence, I want to show you how beautiful is this tree behind me. Look guys, spring. So gorgeous, isn't it? This is what life is about, right? How beautiful. I have to stop and acknowledge and appreciate and smell the roses. <laughs> so, the immigration pact, there is a decision of the European Parliament. So the European Parliament has adopted the Migration Pact. There were 301 votes in favor, 272 against, and 46 abstentions. So probably those who didn't vote, either they were afraid to say no, or maybe they got bribed a bit. I'm just thinking, you know, that's usually how it works. Or maybe they were convinced in some other ways. For example, I've seen you in that place at that time with that woman doing that thing, you know. And then, no bueno, your reputation already kaputski. The European Commission argues that the pact is a solution to the problems related to the asylum process in the European Union. About 50% international organizations, including the Helsinki Foundation for Human Rights, have spoken out against the solutions contained in the report. The organizations warn that the pact does not solve the problems, but only worsens the situation of migrants and does not support member states hosting large numbers of people at external borders, such as Greece or Italy. The adopted solutions include, I think, Spain as well, right? It's not Spain too. The adopted solutions include, for example, the mechanism of the so-called voluntary solidarity. They absolutely are obsessed with this word solidarity, aren't they? Solidarity. In total, the Chamber voted on the 10 legislative texts, let me sit down here, good spot, texts that 
make up the pact on Wednesday, which is yesterday. Yesterday, that's right. And all of them were adopted. Yep, all of them were adopted under the sea, under the sea. Activists opposed to the pact tried to disrupt the vote in the chamber in Brussels. Uh, the reform was proposed by the European Commission in 2016, but due to the proposed forced relocation, it was blocked by some member states. The EP voted on a new version, provisionally agreed with the Council of the Union in December 2023 and presented by the European Commission in 2021. It provides for two mechanisms to support countries under migration pressure. Now, let me read you what this really is about, as many of you know, but I will just remind you what this project is about. The activation of the so-called voluntary solidarity mechanism is in the regulation on migration and asylum management with the employment of at least 30,000 people every year. Member states will be able to alternatively pay 20,000 euros for each person not admitted or take part in operation at the EU's external borders. One more time. The minimum number per, the, per every year is 30,000 people. You know that we are talking like hundreds of thousands people, right? If not millions. And the country, the state has to pay 20,000 euros per person not admitted or take part in operations at the EU's external borders. Whose money will be paying these guys? Tell me. Do you think they're gonna print more or they're gonna squeeze more out of people? Rhetorical question, right? The mechanism of the so-called enhanced solidarity, which is activated in emergency situations in which the number of people crossing the borders of the EU is so large that it threatens the efficiency of the system and does not provide for forced admission of people. Here, too, countries are to retain the possibility to choose the path of assistance. Let's go there. We change the view a bit. The Migration Pact will still have to be approved by the Council of the Union in which the member states are represented. I mean, approved, not approved, it's already there and I don't know exactly what year they have in mind. I think it's 2025 or after 2025. Here comes the flat, everyone. 20,000 euro, euros per person. Just let's calculate this. And now I have the main topic of this video for you. And that is an article that came out yesterday or the day before yesterday and many channels, Polish channels, uh, were talking about it. And I want to bring this to you because, as you know, in Poland, this year they decided to have 230,000 people that will go through the military trainings because we have to protect our country. And you know I'm being sarcastic now, so please don't tell me like I don't know, because I know how, how it's being brainwashed, right? I know. So those of you who are new to my channel, the only threat that I believe exists is from the governments that run the countries. But in our country, Polonia, they keep on saying that Russia is going to attack us, so we have to be ready, right? So, and what we do? We conscript people They don't want to be conscripted, but... How the summoning to the military commission looks like in Poland? This is an example, just one of the examples, that has been pretty well described and I'm glad that this article came out because I'm gonna read this to you. It reads like a... like a movie, you know, like a story which is 
is a fact that is just described, but this one is addressing a situation with women. I want to say that this is not just with women. This is with women or men. I don't know other genders, how many exist, but to me, there are only two genders in this world. So for years, as I'm aware of, as I've heard, the same was happening with men. Because in those commissions who examine people, there is a lot of psychopaths. There's a lot of crazy cases who are the doctors, excuse my language, who cannot get, I would say, late partners, whatever, or they have some kind of obsession with sexuality. And so they show up in those places. I believe they may be even request to be working in such a places to interact with those people. So let me read you. The title of this article is the summoned, they, they summoned her before a military commission and ordered her to strip down to her underpants. Bear with me. Very interesting story. Do you want us to notify the prosecutor? This is the question and the title. So let's, let's read this. Quoting here, please undress, but everything down to the panties. How, ca how can you not? Are you really going to cause problems? Do you want us to inform the prosecutor? What do you need it for? End of quote. And another one. Just knock on the door before you come back. The doctor will decide whether he will take you on again. So when Justyna, Justyna, just, Justine, Justine, I think you can translate in English, Justyna, Polish name. When Justyna returned, she had to undergo a humiliating examination and listen to crude jokes about her appearance. This is the ascent, assessment of a woman's fitness for military service in Poland. Not just women, of course, but men as well, we know. Justyna is 23 years old and is studying psychology. Recently, she was summoned to appear before a military commission. Once there, she realized that she had more in common with the other young woman than not knowing why she was there. Military service was the last thing Justyna thought about when choosing a field of study. Ad admittedly, a psychologist at the front is not an unusual and is very much needed, but there are rather experienced specialists there. Certainly not young people who haven't heard much, who haven't, who haven't had much to do with patients yet, especially psychology students. So when she, when she opened the summon letter to the military commission, she first thought it was a joke, then a mistake. And finally, she was really scared. Now quoting her, it's just a, for sorry, not her, her friends. It's just a form formality, don't worry, just show up and get over it. You will see it's nothing terrible. You will get the paper and forget about it. Her friends would say, and she, try and she tried not to think the worst. Now from her, it's not like I wouldn't take the service. I would do it, but only if I had to, not of my own free will. She admits honestly. There was no word in the summons about what the process of determining her fitness for military, military service would look like. The first surprise awaited her when she arrived at the address indicated in the letter. Are you ready? Where they have those... Uh, commissions, those experts. The military commission was waiting for Justyna in the kindergarten. I was dismayed. Then it made me laugh and finally, when it was over, it disgusted me. It's sick that something so disgusting was happening in a place where children are. The hallway was full of young women, most of them her own age. I quietly Sorry, I quickly, I quickly caught my eyes on my fellow students. After a short exchange, we came to the conclusion 
that what we had in common was not only a complete lack of understanding of the situation in which we found ourselves, because I was not the only one who did not know why I had been summoned and why and what the assessment would look like. There was something else. We were all final year psychology students. While waiting for her turn, Justyna noticed that her friends were leaving the office depressed. They looked the other way and avoided talking. Only later did she understood why. When she was called in, she saw three people in front of her. Two elderly women, one as a nurse and a clerk, and an even older man, a doctor. I was immediately struck by their attitude, as if they were sitting there as a punishment, irritated and tired of life in advance, Justyna recalls. Then a bizarre discussion began. Undress, she heard, but everything to the panties. The nurse, uh, the, the nurse added when she saw that Justyna had only taken off her blouse. I am not going to strip down to my underpants. How can it not? I just don't see any reason why I should do that. Are you really going to cause a trouble? I don't make a fuss, I just don't want to get naked. I'm on my period and it's un uncomfortable for me. The doctor, was seen, the doctor has seen a lot and you have a duty to do so. Don't be too strange. You undress once or twice and that's it. I'm not going to do that. Do you want us to inform the prosecutor? You're such a, a young lady. What for? As, just, as Justyna recalls, at that moment she was on the verge of crying. She felt cornered and intimidated. She had no idea if she would actually get in trouble with the law for refusing. And if needed, what can these people do? She had her life ahead of her. She was just starting her professional career. Maybe you need to grit your teeth and just get through it. Thoughts swirled in her head. Finally, she said she wanted to go out, call and consult with someone close to her. No one spoke, so she turned around and opened the door. As she was leaving, she was told, just knock on the door before you come back. The doctor will decide whether he will take you again. I ended up undressing, she said, she says quietly. I just got scared. She remembered what she heard during the examination as if through a hail, haze, sorry, a haze. I think I've denied, I think I've denied it, she admits it. The doctor began his assessment of my fitness for military service <laughs> by squeezing my breasts. What was the purpose of this? He wasn't even a gynecologist or oncologist. He was a surgeon. Justyna got angry. I stood there, sitting with anger and helplessness, not knowing why I was there or why I was forced to undress or how it was possible that the doctor was looking at me almost naked and groping me. After all, these are not things that are crucial for military qualification. It was disgusting. Justyna's examination was accompanied by crude comments and jokes. Here are examples. In closing, the doctor said, I hope you don't have any surprises in those panties. You don't hide any razor blades, any razor blades or anything, and laughed. I was embarrassed. And I wasn't the only one because when I talked to one of my friends later, she admitted that she had also witnessed, sorry, listened, that she also listened to similar texts. The doctor commented on, for example, her tights saying, Jesus, but you have cellulite. Do you know it's not going away? It's too big. Later in the study, um, later in the study, the doctor assessed the posture. He also allowed himself to make comments like this. 
your legs are going apart. I mean, worse. <laughs> Maybe he had something with eyes, huh? Do you eat anything at all? You have a weak figure. After the assessment, Justyna returned home quite quickly. She didn't feel like chatting for a long time. I don't think any of the girls had. To this day, she wonders if stripping down to her panties was enough if her friends didn't have to stand there naked and her period saved her. Today, a few weeks after the incident, Justyna has very bitter reflections. Last words from Justyna, guys. The excitement had subsided a bit, but I'm still wondering why it has to be this way. The world seems to be changing, but in our country, as it was, so it is. Disrespect, crossing boundaries. Sometimes I think to myself, why did I go to this psychology class? To stand in front of some old stranger and hear that I have to undress because if I don't, I'm threatened with some consequences? I just wanted to help people. I, I'm absolutely sure she's never going to watch my video, but this, this actually helps people, Justina, okay? Because you have to share stories like this. So other people are becoming aware, not delusional, what's really just starting to take place in case of women, in my opinion. And men have been going through this for a long time. A lot of doctors actually prefer men, you know, especially young men, maybe like really young men, you know what I'm saying? So, guys, that's how this looks like in Poland. I wanted to read you this. I'm sorry again for all my mistakes I made mispronouncing many words. You can read this article uh, you find the link down below in the description box. This is just the beginning. And now you ask yourself, why we even are having those uh, examinations here? Well, you see, because we have to help Ukraine. We have to help Ukraine because the big corporations, an agreement with Wall Street bankers, etc., plus all the politicians that are bought by them decided that it's good to continue with the world projects because it brings lots of money and depopulates and depopulates the nations. I mean, why you are calling um, 20 some years old girls who are still during the process of studying at school, right? It's not even, she's not a psychologist yet. She's still at school. This is not someone experienced who can bring any value whatsoever to the front line. I mean, what front line really are we talking about? So that's how it looks like, guys. Very sexy subject, isn't it? Two comments of the day. Both are from my live stream with Andrei Martianov. The first one is, uh, this is actually the title is Russia is done with the West of this live stream. So the first comment is from very cool name, Sam Wise the Brave. What a name. I live in the West and I am done with it as well. <laughs> Sorry. The good comment. No, straight to the point. Many people like your comment, by the way, too. Second comment from a Serbian viewer. Rano jutro. You know, if this is the same in Serbian like in Polish, rano jutro means morning, tomorrow. We say the same. Rano jutro. Jutro rano, actually, like tomorrow morning. And you are saying, I am Serbian. We Serbian people love Russian people. We always did. That, that's the reason why we are paying the price and they call us little Russians. I didn't know that. I want to say big hello to everyone from Serbia. I am not into like influencers as far as anything, but there is one fashion influencer from Serbia her name is, i written down, because the last name I'm not sure if I pronounce correctly, Tamara Kalinic. 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 She's very beautiful and she's very stylish and I absolutely love that girl. Um, you know, she's in the fashion industry, so it's a certain type of uh, being, but she's very real, very authentic, very, very good taste and a beautiful girl. So my favorite fashion influencer actually is from Serbia. So that's what I want to say. Guys, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed this video in spite of my English pronunciation, please hit this like, 
really means a lot if you hit this like free of charge leave the comments down below i read them all subscribe if you haven't already if you choose to if you choose to support me the best way to, is to do it via locals you can do it monthly or by donating to my fundraiser that is dedicated to my move to the our country you know what i mean and follow me on instagram as well what else? Mailing list free of charge. PayPal is there as well. And tomorrow, Friday, I have another live stream scheduled with Professor Hudson. Something that will be very, very important and worth watching. This is mainly about Gaza, Israel. And the, uh, Professor Hudson will go into details about what's really taking place there. He sent me very, very important email. In regards to this, so tomorrow, uh, what time we have it? Let me think. You will see the link in the um, community page. I think it will be 11.40 a.m. New York City time. Yes, correct. 11.40 a.m. New York City time. With all of this, guys, thank you so much for watching. Lots of love. And remember, we are the leading edge and we are saving humanity. Bye everyone, see you tomorrow.